All right, we're almost through this thing. So we're running the Innova. There's the raw data. There's the mean sum, sum of squares of each of the little independent cells there. We're going to fill out a variance table on the three-way ANOVA, and this is all the bracket terms. That's what we're going to do during this video. Scarier than zombies, I'd bet. Yes, sir. <laughs> so bracket terms, there's going to be a lot of them. Bracket A, bracket B, blah, 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 blah. Here's the interactions, and here's the total and the within group. So start with A. The alphabet starts with A. Let's start with A. So with A, we need to figure out all the sums of all the A's. Okay, so we're going to do, here's all the A1s, A2s, A3s from the C1 group and the C2 group. It really doesn't matter about the B's at this point. But we're going to we're gonna go ahead and, and glean the information from the table that we built from the means, the sums, and the sum of squares. Okay, so we're just going to take all the A's, regardless of the B's. So we're going to take the marginal sums here so it's going to be 44 70 105 we're going to use those to fill in this new matrix here right so a1 from c1 is 44 a2 from c1 is 70 a3 from c1 is 105 we're going to go ahead and fill those in here and likewise with c2 right 41 42 98 and we have all those. And normally we should just go ahead and make column sums and row sums. Because we're probably going to need it later on down the road. So let's add them all up. This is what we get. And again, adding down this, this number right here should be the same as these numbers when you add them up. And it is. So to calculate bracket A, we're going to take each column sum. Right, because that's what we're looking for. We're just looking at the A's. 85, 112, 203. We're going to square them all. We're going to add them up. We're going to divide by what is not in this term. So we're looking at B, C, and N. N, B, C. Brought to you by N, B, C. Okay. Remember, N is the number in one group, and that's four. B is the number of levels in B, that's 3, and there's two levels in C. Go ahead and do some calculations. And we figured out the A bracket term. That wasn't so bad, was it? No. So here comes the B bracket term. It's going to be the same thing. This time we're going to disregard the A's. So we're just going to look at the column totals here, right? So regardless of the A's, here's the column totals for C. Here's the column totals for C2. Here's C1, C2 for all the B's. So these are the numbers we're going to replace in our little new graph here, our new matrix. Right, 97, let's double check. 97, 66, 56, yes. And our next one is going to be 93, 49, 39, yes. And again, let's go ahead and add them up all the way around. And we'll get a grand sum. Again, it should be 400. Right? That should be the same as the A. And it is. Right? They're all the same. The A's and the B's, regardless of which one we're kind of holding out, the sum total should be the same. And it is. So for the B, we're just going to take the column sum, 190, 115, 95. We're going to square those. We're going to divide those by the, the factor of the product of N times A times C. And again, N is 4, A, there's three levels in A, and there's two in C. Do a little bit more math, and we get our B bracket term. That was pretty easy. So the C. For the C bracket term, we can use either the A's or the B's. We're just going to use the strictly the C values, right? We don't care about the columns. Those would be the B values, just the row totals here. So our C bracket term is going to be 219 squared plus 181 squared. And because there's a C in a bracket term, we're not going to use that in the denominator. So N again is 4. A is 3 levels. B is 3 levels. Let's do some math. Going to calculate it. 
So now we have our C bracket term. Those were the easy ones. So here comes the AB bracket term. For the AB bracket term, we should probably make a new table. Strictly with the A's and the B's. But we're going to have to add up what was in C1 and in C2, right? So here's A1, B1 at C1. Here's A1, B1 at C2. So in this new table, we're going to have to add up 22 plus 23. So in this new table, this is going to be 45. We're going to do the same thing for A2, B1. Right? Here's A2, B1. So we're going to add 31 to 22. And that's going to give us 53. And we're just, I'm just going to go ahead and do them all. Right? I'm going to add every. I'm going to add 44 to 48, 12 to 10, 18 to 13, etc., etc. So this is my new AB table. And to figure out the bracket term, we just added all these up. I'm just used to it. We might not need it, but let's see what's going to happen. To figure out the new AB bracket term, we have to take every one of these, 45, 53, 92, 22, blah, 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 all the way down to 49, square them all, divide them by N and C, right? Because AB is in the bracket term, so there will be no AB in the denominator. So again, um, N is 4, C is 2. Just going to divide that out. So now we have our AB bracket term. That wasn't so bad. Our AC bracket term, we're going to basically do the same thing. We already made this table, if you remember. Right? Let's get rid of this thing. We don't need that. Pabam. But we're going to, to find the AC, we're going to take 44 squared, 70 squared, 105 squared, all of these squared. Right, 44, 70, 105, 41, 42, 98 squared and divided by N times B. N is 4, B is 3. There's three levels in B. And we get AC, bracket term AC. Pressing along, let's go and do BC. It's the last two way we're missing. So with the BC, we're going back to this original table we made. Not original, but we just made it, right? The B columns against the C rows. So to find the BC, we're going to take the 97 squared, 66, 56, 93, 49, 39. Square all those, add them all up. Divide by what's not in the bracket term. So N times A. And N was 4 and A was 3. So... We're just, I'm just doing the math now. So now I have the bracket term for BC. What's next? Uh-oh. ABC. Oh, my gosh. That's the big one. We have to take every one of these guys and square them. Every one. Right? The sum of every little subgroup. All the, all the, everything from C1, everything from C2 etc etc let's see what it looks like right it's going to be 22 plus 31 plus 44 everything squared 12 squared 18 squared 36 squared blah 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 blah, blah all the way down to 7 squared 24 squared we're going to divide that by n which is 4 and that's going to give us our bracket term abc and i'm writing these down by the way so now we have to find the T term. The T term we can use from any table. Here's one we made with the A's versus the B's. Right? We're gonna we're looking at this big number here, 400. But now if we look at the other tables, right, where we did the A's versus the C's or the B's versus the C's, this this grand sum is always the same. That's the number we're gonna use. 400 squared times everybody. Right, N is 4, there's 3 levels in A, 3 levels in B, 2 levels in C, multiply that all out. So now we have our T bracket term. And last one is our Y bracket term. This one is the nightmare. We have to take every term, 7, square it, 4, square it, 5, square it, 6, square it, all of these. Square them all. Add them all up. Divide by one, because this is the within group bracket term. It considers it only one group. So if you square all those, divide by one, you get your Y bracket term. 
So now I think we have all our bracket terms, and here they are. And that's a lot. And this is a good spot to stop. We're going to go ahead and plug these into the next video where we're going to actually use the source table and calculate our Fs and finish this bad boy. But that's it for now. Watch out for them zombies.